Hey guys, Avi here and welcome to this brand new series on Java programming. Now, I know what you're wondering, what is Java? Java is one of the most popular languages in the coding world. Java does everything from making good GUIs to websites to browser platforms, APIs, requests, and so much more. Java is a very powerful and easy to learn language and whether you're a beginner trying to learn Java for the first time or you're an experienced programmer looking to pick up Java as another language, you are in the right place. These series of videos are going to cover everything there is to Java, from the variables, conditional statements, loops, all the way up to object-oriented programming, inheritance, and a lot more. I hope you're as excited as I am, and I can't wait to get started. Let's dive right into it. So first thing first, guys, let's go ahead and install Java on our machine. And in order to do that, I'm going to go to my browser, in this case Chrome, and I'm going to search for Java download. So there's two ways you can download Java. One is straight from the Java platform. Um, over here, you can see Java SE downloads. Go ahead and click on that. Right now, the version of Java is version 11. So if that is the version that you also have, please download that. Also, if you're on a Mac device, you can install something called Homebrew. Homebrew is a package manager on Mac, and it allows you to install packages very easily. Copy paste this sort of line in your terminal. And the way I can do this is open up my terminal and then paste this. So command C and command V. And then what that does is that's going to go ahead and install my homebrew on my machine. And then after that, if you just search um, brew cask install Java, I think that's the line um, to install Java on Mac. That is the line you have to run over here. Brew cask install Java. So after homebrew has been installed, this is a very simple and easy way to install Java. Otherwise, if you're running Mac, Linux, any other machine, just download Java from the Oracle platform itself. Once Java has been downloaded, guys, the next step is to actually go ahead and install an IDE, basically an editor in which you can write your Java code. As you might have saw on my screen, I use IntelliJ. I definitely recommend it. If you're looking for an online version or you can't download anything, definitely check out REPL.IT. REPL.IT is a fantastic platform. You can go ahead and create your very own Java platform and start writing the code there. So whether you choose to follow along by going to REPL.IT or by installing IntelliJ on your machine, both of them are totally fine. Go ahead and click on IntelliJ. They have a free community version that I highly recommend for Windows, Mac, or Linux. And if you are a student, you get the ultimate version for free. All right, now that IntelliJ has been installed on your machine, just go ahead and open it up. That is my IntelliJ IDEA right over here. And now I'm gonna go ahead and create my brand new Java project. So the way you can do this, guys, is create a new project. And then inside of this, there's a lot of different templates. I'm gonna choose Java. Make sure your SDK is the latest version. For me, it is 11 and then go ahead and hit next. It's gonna say create project from template. For now, actually, if you do have this option, you can go ahead and say Java, hello world. If you don't have this option, don't worry, you're not missing anything. Go ahead and hit next, and then it's gonna ask you for your project name. So in this scenario, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new folder in my code repository, um, and that's gonna be over here, and I'm gonna create a new folder, and I'm gonna call this um, hello world. Hit create, and then inside of this, hit open, and now I'm gonna go ahead and hit finish. So what this did, guys, is I went ahead and created my very own platform, sort of hello world template. And in this scenario, let me just go ahead and enter. And we have this pre-written code. If I open up hello world directory and go into source, I have this main.java class already created and run. Fantastic. So one thing before I explain how all this works and what code is written over here, I'm going to go into terminal, guys, and I'm actually going to CD into the directory of my project. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to say CD documents cd code and then cd hello world again you don't have to do this i'm just showing this for like a quick um general sake and then inside of this guys i'm going to say cd source so if i hit ls which basically says list all my files i have this file main.java now the thing about java is that there's a compiler and then there's a way you can run the java file whenever you have a main.java file if you want to go ahead and run this you first have to compile it to make sure there are no bugs so there are obviously better ways to do this in IntelliJ. But as a basic Java programmer, you should know this. To compile a Java file, what you want to do is type Java C and then main.java. Okay, so Java C main.java compiles your Java file. Hit enter. And now if I hit ls, ls again lists all my files in my directory, I now see main.class and main.java. So what happens here is that the compiler in Java will go ahead and compile my file and then create this new class file. And now what I can do is I can run my class file by saying Java main and this go ahead and enter gets us hello world fantastic so what we did here guys is we compiled our main.java file which is pre-written by pre-written to us by intellij and then what we went ahead and did is we created 
the main.class file and then ran it with Java and then main. So that is the gist of how you run Java files on your machine, guys. You first have to compile it, make sure there are no bugs, and then you can go ahead and run it saying Java and then your class name. Now going back to this code, guys, what is going on over here? Last thing I want to cover in this video, let's go ahead and break this down. So we're creating a class and it's public, so it's accessible by most modifiers, called main. And inside of this, we're creating this function, public static void main string args. So I'm going to break this down into, you will see this everywhere in Java. Public basically means that this class or this function is accessible. Static means that, like, don't worry about static for now. There's static versus non-static. I'll be explaining this in a future video. Void means that nothing is returned from this function. And then the main function of any class gets called every single time we run Java main. So if I had another class called animal, and inside of that I had a main method, if I had run Java animal, then when I run this command Java animal, it'll actually run the main method of my class. That is what the main method is supposed to do. Then inside of this, you see the string brackets arcs. That basically means that, hey, if there are any parameters passed in by the user, store them in an args array. Again, I'll explain this all in much more detail. And then last but not least, system.out.println is Java's way of saying, hey, print something out to the console. This is how I print. System.out.println hello world gets me hello world in terminal. Fantastic job, guys. This was your first introduction to Java. In this video, we got Java installed. We downloaded an editor. We created our very own main.java file, and then we ran it and compiled it. Fantastic job, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.